Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, be it on air, online, live streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app or over on our various social media channels. We find us on these days either under Andrew J. Polk or the El Paso History Radio Show, El Paso History, El Paso History Radio, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch.tv are the social sites you can find us on these days. A lot of links going on there, of course, also on some of our partner pages, including the great page Remember in El Paso When. And of course, today is Saturday. January, start of the new year, good second week of it anyway, of 2023. And today we are talking about the Texas Master Naturalist Program and in many parts that go into it and how essentially, the way I think of it anyway, can set you up to be a professional volunteer or at least very well educated in a certified kind of way about many of the aspects of the physical, natural, and otherwise environments in our region. And we're definitely going to be delving into that and what's on the subjects that are talked about here today. So, of course, in all the places that you can find us, we do, of course, take comments over there, a more of a response kind of thing. But this is definitely the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. And we do have a history moment for you at the start of Hour 2 from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk, talking about this week a popular Mexican faith healer who resided in El Paso for a time. But, of course, uh, talking about the issues we got going on here today, uh, joining us here in studio right Right now, actually, I actually have a couple of crews coming through uh, with this interview today, but uh, right now joining us uh, from my left to right, we do have uh, Joseph Arteaga, the president of the Trans-Pecos chapter of the Texas Master Naturalist Program, uh, Lois Balin, the urban wildlife bi- uh, biologist with uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife and an advisor for the Texas Master Naturalist Program, and Alex Fashing, vice president of the Trans-Pecos chapter and also a, a water conservation specialist with El Paso Water. So thank you all very much for joining us here in studio today. Oh, thank Thanks you for, for having, having us. us. Absolutely happy to have you all on. This is something that has appeared in other parts, the, the subject, the concept of what Texas Master Natural is. We've talked about in previous ways and what well, has technically appeared on this station, but on other programs. First time we've really had you all on to talk about this and have, we have quite the group in here today, even beyond who can uh, those on our uh, social sites can see in front of them or who you'll be hearing from on the radio. we got more people waiting in the wings as well, so we got a, a jam-packed couple of hours. We'll be trying to squeeze in a lot of information, but I think the most critical question, I kind of gave my interpretation of it, of course, here, but for those who may not have heard about this program or are unfamiliar with the concept, uh, starting with you, Joseph, when someone asks, okay, so what is a Texas Master Naturalist, how, how do you go about describing that, what that is? Well, the first thing they always ask me is, are you guys a news colony, which I'm, <laughs> I'm taken back by, but no, we're, the Texas Master Naturalist program uh, was started uh, with the concept of training, as you said in the beginning, Mm -hmm. training, educating volunteers so that they can get out in the community, in the region, and uh, help out with educational activities, lead field Mm -hmm. trips, interact with various agencies and groups within the city, uh, work with our young people, and uh, spread the word of uh, our wonderful Trans-Pecos region and uh, all the diversity that's out here. Absolutely. So we got some of the pictures coming up of that, of uh, pictures that you sent me of different kind of activities or things going along with this, including the honestly pretty recognizable logo that comes along with this. It's a dragonfly base. If people may not have seen that, I, I could have sworn I've seen at least one like a uh, uh, vanity license plate out there that has stuff like this on this. So people may or may not have seen this kind of representation out in the community, right? Absolutely. We do have our own license plate. Okay, so I, that wasn't me hallucinating. Glad to know that I actually did see that and wasn't wishful thinking. So, again, there's there's a lot that goes into it because beyond the idea of, oh, well, you've got certain competencies, certain knowledge, this is not just kind of a, a you know, hip pocket class of, yeah, I've read about this, I've read a couple of books kind of concept. Like, this is a truly formulated and, again, statewide recognized certification that comes out of this, right? Absolutely. Uh, it was set up by uh, uh, Texas A&M AgriLife and then... Texas Parks and Wildlife, Mm -hmm. and they put together a program which is comparable to any uh, college program that you could take. Uh, We have nationally recognized experts that teach the classes, and uh, at the end of the program, you have a uh, well-versed foundation Mm -hmm. in various aspects, which we'll go over later, but yes. In uh, depth, absolutely, yeah. It's quite a program. 
And again, some of the, just getting more of the like requirements part of it here. It, it's beyond just a an abiding interest, so to speak. This is truly a you are going through a curriculum. Like this is this is. I mean, all of the people we're going to have in here today, you all are involved in this as well because it takes quite a lot to to put this in here. Again, this is not some kind of just thrown together class. This has been evolving over years and has now come down to. I mean, there are things involving, uh, say, you know, requirements on the people who are applying to it, and you have to be accepted uh, go through certain checks and meet requirements in order to to hold the certification so again, again kind of college class might be the best kind of simple way kind of shorthand people might be able to best understand this of, of what it actually takes to get and hold this absolutely absolutely and what's so fat neat about this program is that uh, every class uh, covers a different aspect of the trans pecos region mm -hmm. and our natural environment so each class will be taught by a professor a lot of our uh, instructors are from UTEP that are teaching there, and they take the time out to come and teach a class specifically for that uh subject that they're talking about so i mean some of the requirements that come to mind here are there are a certain amount of like uh, hours requirements like there's a certain duration that people have to have been in the classroom of uh, receiving instruction and things like that so actually uh, alex let me toss it to you here then uh, again alex fashing uh, vice president of the trans pecos chapter of the texas master naturalist program i mean the requirements here are I don't know if I can exactly call them stringent, but it's not kind of like, you know, back of the hand written on a napkin, like, yeah, here's what you should probably do kind of thing. Like, these are set requirements. Right, absolutely. So um, to become a certified Texas Master Naturalist, you have to go through a training class. It's a multi-week training class. It's up to um, 40 hours of classroom instruction, mm -hmm. which also includes field trips uh, that we, we go out and do. We look at the dinosaur tracks when we talk about archaeology. Mm -hmm. um, we look at uh, Waco tanks as well. There, there are a lot of different things that, that we have to learn before we can even start doing volunteer hours, which is another 40-hour requirement. Right. Um, and then eight hours of advanced training on top of that just to get your, your initial certification. Yeah, and so you're gonna, as you referenced there, I'm going to get the slightly closer angle on you. Not quite able to be seen right there, but uh, you have that uh, plaque, that uh, name tag on there, uh, demonstrating that that is, again, a format of the version of the uh, full logo there. So it's not just a, a nice-looking thing. Again, it has significance behind it because you, you have to put in work to get it, essentially. Yes, yes, you do, yeah. Um, that is uh, one of the coolest things about these, these uh, courses is how broad the, the topics are. Uh, everything having to do with our eco region, mm -hmm. we spend hours and hours learning about. So when we are finally certified, we're able to go out into the community, we are uh, you know, a service-based and education-based volunteer organization. So again, the, again, the way I kind of think of it is as a professional volunteer, which, I mean, sure, sounds oxymoronic, but is uh, accurate in this case because you have gone through an amount of training and proficiency that is required to come along with it in order to then be able to go and, I mean, assist with things like Texas Parks and Wildlife or other organizations, similar kind of things. I mean, it's kind of like uh, a way you can semi-officially be able to go and just kind of walk into any of the you know NGOs that deal with the uh, natural environment or, or state level agencies that deal with these kind of things I mean uh, particularly for um, uh, Lois turning to you now uh, Lois uh, uh, Ballin the urban wildlife uh, biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife what does it mean when someone you know can come along with this certification and say for when it comes to Texas Parks and Wildlife what does that mean for you all when uh, someone that has this and gone through this process is saying hey I want to work with her or see what I can do with you all what does that end up mean on y'all's end? Uh, usually, they will be able to volunteer with any of Texas Parks and Wildlife projects, and they're, they're welcome. That's why we're here, because there are so many agencies and organizations with similar missions, and they're usually staffed by one, like me, mm -hmm. or they're short staffed. And so, we've got this core of volunteers that are willing and anxious and enjoy helping out the agencies of anything to do with natural resources. Absolutely. So uh, as an advisor for the Texas Master Naturalist Program, what are some of the things that, that you, you like talking about or that you end up focusing on during, you know, kind of the, pro the progress of these classes and the certification? Basically, if there are any questions in the format or the, you know, logistics of the program, mm -hmm. they will consult me. If there's a question about, is this, is this subject, okay for advanced training like tomato growing 
they will come to me and I'll say, no, we, that is not a requirement. That's not in the advanced training program, although our program is patterned after the Master Gardener program. And that's one of the questions that I had kind of come up to me, frankly, initially was, oh, you're going to talk about the Master Gardener. And I said, no, 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 this is something different. I mean, sure, it could cross-apply in certain ways. We are talking about kind of the physical environment that goes around with this. And I kind of say that specifically because you mentioned, you know, kind of the, Alex, the, the eco region, but also it's not even just the, you know, nature hikes or what grows here. It's kind of what is fully present in our physical environment. That's the way I think of it anyway. Yeah, um, we, we don't only talk about the flora and fauna that exists here in the Chihuahuan Desert. We talk about geology and hydrology, which is, is my favorite. We Absolutely. talk about archaeology, um, every single facet of the natural eco region, the Trans Pecos eco region that surrounds us, we learn about it. And I mean, among other things, such as, again, uh, speaking spe specifically to your speciality there, going through, like, say, the Tech H2O Center would be, you know, a part of this to understand both parts of it and then how, the, again, the, you know, the way we inhabit the, this region interacts with, you know, what is, you know, naturally present here, right? Yes, absolutely. So um, one of the, the parts of this training program is uh, hydrology and aquatics, and that is where the partnership with El Paso Water comes in. Um, the Trans-Pecos uh, Texas Master Naturalists spend a lot of time out at the Tech H2O Water Resources Learning Facility because that's exactly that facility's purpose. Is mm. We're able to educate not just the Master Naturalists, but the Master Gardeners. And anybody in El Paso that wants to learn about water, you can do it at Tech H2O. So essentially, as uh, we're getting up to the end of this first segment already here, but uh, Joseph, going back to you, uh, the way that this program, you know, kind of is formulated and comes about and the way people go through it, again, if someone is still kind of like uh, unclear on the concept here, what do you tell them about, you know, what it kind of at the end of this, what you are then essentially what you've learned and what you're able to do then specifically with it? Right. Well, the program we, as uh, said, is set up to teach. Mm -hmm. and to educate and to experience. So a lot of people have, you know, they have some interest in something, whether it could be botany, it could be uh, birds, uh, it could be any number of things. And then what they do is they come into the program and uh, they get a foundation uh, of whatever it is, uh, archaeology. And mm -hmm. we have the uh, uh, instructor from UTEP come and uh, speak to us about archaeology in El Paso, in the trans region. And then that person gets that interest uh, burning in them, I guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they can pursue further education in that area, and we, we facilitate that. But basically, the program is set up to give a good foundation in all these areas so that the person that applies to the program will get a taste of all these different things. And if they have a certain interest in something, uh, like Alex with water, uh, mm -hmm. then... Uh, she can pursue it even further. Uh, but basically, once again, the program is set up to give a nice, broad, broad foundation. So that if one day you're found, uh, like with me, my interest initially was for Girl Scouts. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I would take my Girl Scouts out, and we'd go on a hike, and they'd be asking, you know, Mr. Joe, what is that? What is that bird over there? And I was like, uh, I don't know. It's a bird. It's a bird. <laughs> yeah, a pretty bird. Uh, so when I heard about this program, I was mm -hmm. like, my goodness, I'd like to learn more so that when I take my girls out, uh, I'll be more better educated, have a better foundation and be able to uh, show them a little bit more and be more uh, accurate in what I discuss with them. So it's a neat program in that respect. Uh, it was set up by uh, AgriLife, Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. And so they set up a process to get involved in the program. And, of course, the first step is to contact us. And we get out an application out to them. They fill out the application. They bring it back to us. We review it. And then from there, we do a background check. Right. And if everything turns out fine, then we invite them to start the program. Which, again, is a... I'm not going to call it intensive, but it is definitely very formulated. So we'll get into more on that and some of the like uh, how it actually progresses here in just a second. Got to take that first break of this hour right now. Again, joining us here in studio for this hour right now, we do have a Joseph Arteaga, the president of the Trans Pecos chapter of the Texas Master and Master Naturalist Program, uh, Lois Ballin, the urban wife, uh, biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife, and advisor for the program, and uh, Alex Fashing, vice president with the uh, Texas Master Naturalist Program here in our region. So got to take that first break right now. Coming out of this break, still. 
talking with them and having more conversations about what the program is and how it works. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember, thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, want to mention that we are the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook and a few other Facebook pages as well, but go to that main one there for our weekly promo announcements on the topics of the program coming up each and every week. Full announcements a little bit later on, uh, but next week on the program we're going to be talking about some specifics involving the actual uh, Franklin Mountains State Park in town here. But of course, also go to our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash History TV, where you can find again another part of our live stream there. But including the entire series of El Paso Gold DVDs from Capstone Productions, covering more than the last couple of decades of history production and documentaries in town, fully uploaded and free for your viewing pleasure. Plus the more recent. 
20 ABC7 History TV segments produced by El Paso History TV and that I had a hand in on the back end and the production of myself here. But of course, after the show today, we will be headed back out to Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant in Canyon Teal. It is open for in-house dining, back open for the year, of course. 6761 Donovan Drive. Well, one of the better ways to get down there is to head down Talbot or the Spur. They got out that way now and then uh, find it uh, not too far from Lake uh, Tamales Lupita, if you know the area out there. But again, 6761 Donovan and drive. You can call Peppy's at 915 915- 877-2152 915-877-2152 They are of course open during the week there. Call them for hours and availability but of course it is the home of the Juan and only Margarita and the continuation of the Great Greg's Recipes. The traditional recipes, the old recipes made with new food of course there. I particularly like uh, usually get the Kroom special one I had out there but again, put it out there immediately after the broadcast of the show here today. But again, joining us here in studio right now continuing we're going to talk about the Texas Master Naturalist Program. We are of course joined by uh, Joseph Arteaga, president of the Trans-Pecos chapter of the program, Alex Fashing on the other end, vice president of the program, and uh, Lois Balin, the urban wildlife biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife and advisor for the Texas Master Naturalist program here. So we're talking a little bit more about some of the like requirements, some of the things that go into it, and I just want to kind of stress about it. You mentioned a bit about uh, the, the process to sign up. There has to be more than a passing interest. People have to be have a decent level of commitment because it is a process. They need to sign up and again the, some of the information you can find over a website is at txmn for texas master naturalist so txmn.tamu.edu is where they can find it at least some of the information there and then they'll be able to find specifics about the they scroll down a little bit find the specifics of the trans pecos chapter which stretches from el paso all the way to uh terrell county so it's a uh, kind of an expansive region there kind of uh caterpillar on top of the uh, big bend region is kind of the way i think about it when i look on the map there but so the classroom time here it doesn't happen all at once it's not like a one week thing it's kind of on um nights more or less during set parts of the week but it is a time commitment for let's call it a season right i would say that yeah uh i do well typically what happens is that uh we have our classes on uh the uh in the evening Mm -hmm. and the class start around six in the afternoon uh, and then they finish up around 9 o'clock. Typically, we'll have about two lectures each session. Mm-hmm. And we've made the program so that uh, if you do have a job, uh, mm-hmm. then you can finish your job and come over and uh, do your classes. And uh, at first, it, it, it can be a, a little challenging. But after a while, the, I know that from seeing this done over several years, uh, by the end of the program, the students are like, well, there's got to be more. This is great. We want to mm-hmm. keep on going. So uh, it, 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 we've designed it so you can have a job and continue to do uh, this type of uh learning activity so i mean it is a dedication and a commitment that you do make to it but it is something that is meant to be geared around you know people's lives i mean understanding that uh, not everyone has the time to take a sabbatical off of work and uh, go and pursue an interest is i mean that's kind of how this is formulated right absolutely and then our field trips we plan those on the weekend Mm -hmm. uh so and the field trips are wonderful they're just incredible uh, Waco tanks. We go up to see all the pictographs. Mm-hmm. Oh, just beautiful. We have a couple of pictures of some of the uh, times that have been spent out there in different ways. Not exactly Waco tanks here, but some of the other projects, or some of the other uh, hikes that have happened in and around the region, and other visits, including uh, other instruction going on out there. And here's an example of the kind of classroom instruction that comes along with it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, again, it is kind of formulated, but uh, then uh, that's the first part of it, and that's about 40 hours, right? The the classroom and, and other, the instructional part of it, right? Yeah. Give or take. And then, of course, uh, Lois, going over to you now, uh, that, that's only the beginning, kind of like what uh, Joseph was saying, that uh, people are hungry for more. There's a requirement to do more and really get out there and not just kind of continue learning, but also start, in a way, applying or at the very least getting used to applying the skills and knowledge that has been learned, right? That is correct. I mean, the program is about training and informing mm-hmm. volunteers in all the natural sciences so that they can get out in the community and help all our local partners. We're partnered with El Paso Autobahn, with um, mm-hmm. Rio Bosque Wetlands Park, with City Parks, Insights Museum, Green Hope Project. There are a lot of mm-hmm. agencies mm-hmm. that are really wanting help to get the word out to help with habitat management, building trails, leading bird walks. And you don't have to 
do something outdoors. I mean, there are a right. lot of options. If you're an artist, we could use an artist. If you do graphics, publication. So, I mean, some of it is labor, but not all of it. So you can pick and choose what you're interested in. But that giving back component of it, not just a kind of receiving and then maybe applying it, but specifically giving back as part of it, not just as a, once you've got it, the certification, you can go out and like help someone is the concept, but as a, while you're still receiving the certification, it's important to, to get into that habit, essentially. It is. Actually, one of our projects is a burn hour research, mm -hmm. and a lot of master naturalists are interested in that. And they start helping me out um, during their training. And then after the training, I have dedicated volunteers that help me with my work at Rio Bosque Wetlands Park. I wouldn't be able to do it without the Master Naturalist help. Absolutely. I think we have at least one example of uh, something along those lines here of like a uh, habitat or at least uh, terrain management. That's there building well. a habitat there in that photo. Or they're uh, done building it. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, showing a group of people assembled by what to uh, those who are not aware of it might look like uh, some pipes in the ground, but essentially that is meant to be a, a habitat for, you know, critters and uh, uh, the owls, like you mentioned, right? Yes, it's an underground habitat. They live underground. So there is a, as opposed to just being looking like holes in the ground, there is a sign, particularly in the picture as well, demarking it as such so no one thinks like, oh, well, why is this stormwater drain backing up? Because that's not what it is, basically. But that's an example of some of the things that you can and people do go out and do as both a part of and then beyond this program, right? Yes, that's correct. And that's there's many, many opportunities with Texas Parks and Wildlife. There's many opportunities with all the local partners mm -hmm. as well. And uh, so we really, we're like a family. Um, we're all bonded together with similar mm -hmm. interests. It's a very friendly group and a very welcoming group. And we, we love our volunteers. Absolutely. And again, an important part of this, this project is doing the volunteering. So we've got to take that next break right now. So stay tuned, talking more about the Texas Master Naturalist Program and more onto some of the subjects as we've just kind of begun to scratch the surface on that are a part of both the education and the giving back part of it. So stay tuned. More on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his... Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. 
Of course, I want to mention some of our great partners in promoting different aspects of El Paso history and experiences that you can go out there and get for yourself here, including, of course, the group over at Celebration of Our Mountains. You can find them at celebrationofourmountains.org or just search Celebration of Our Mountains on your uh, search engine of choice here. They have a lot of events coming up now, even going on today, though, if you're only hearing about it right now, you already missed that on it there, uh, Footprint in the Lava Fields near Aiden Crater. But coming up later on, including January 19th, Los Morales de Segundo Barrio, as well as well as the Schaefer Shuffle Trail and Loop 1 on January 24th, Fillmore Canyon and Mining History, Mining History of the Oregon Mountains January 28th. Events already going on well throughout the year. So again, check them out and see how you can sign up, be a part of it as well. Celebrationofourmountains.org. Again, Celebration of our mountains.org. But getting back to our guests here in studio, of course, today as we're talking about the Texas Master Naturalist Program, we have from my left to right, uh, Joseph Artiaga, president of the Trans-Pecos chapter of the program, uh, Lois Ballin, the urban wildlife biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife and advisor for the program, and Alex Fashing, vice president with the Trans-Pecos chapter as well. Thank you all very much for uh, sticking around with us here today. Yeah, thank you. So talking more about what goes into the program, we've kind of given the overview so far of, you know, kind of what it takes, what people you know, need to know if they really want to sign up and be a part of it, and how it turns them into, again, best way I can think to describe it, professional volunteer in the area, but there's a lot more specific education. I mean, the 40 hours is not just a, it's not a defensive driving class where, all right, you just got to spend the time, or we're going to look up silly videos or anything. Like, you're doing education on specific subjects, topics, and wanting them to become beyond knowledgeable, proficient with them, because the idea is then to start putting it out there. So, particularly, uh, Alex, uh, starting with you then, when it comes comes to uh, the aspects that, that you focus on, I mean, being vice president of the program, you're obviously involved in the administration and parts of it, but I'm so sure there's still parts of the education that you are uh, interested in and helping put forth, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I am the vice president of the Master Naturalist by night, but by day I'm a water conservation specialist, so mm -hmm. that's where... My heart really is in the aquatics and hydrology portion of this education. So when it comes to those parts of it, so kind of where do you start or introducing people or what are the aspects that you focus on? Well, you know, believe it or not, a lot of people in El Paso don't know where their water comes from. Uh, it comes out of the faucet, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, exactly. You go to the faucet, you turn it on, water comes out, there's the water. And that's um, all you have to worry about. <laughs> Well, in El Paso, thank goodness, you don't have to worry about water not coming out of the faucet because we don't have that problem here. We do have a river that runs through El Paso, but you could walk down to it right now and your feet would not get wet. I've had that happen many a times here, particularly uh, even in segments north of here, did my Boy Scout days, you know, canoeing through there. And there's a phrase I used, real walking, because sometimes even for a <laughs> flat bottom canoe, it was not quite enough depth to it. So... I mean, yeah, we have a river here, and it's part of the founding of El Paso, but if anyone thinks that, oh, yeah, that's our water supply, right? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. in, a, in a word, no. Right. So uh, one of the things that I really like to talk to folks about is where our water really comes from. Sure, mm -hmm. we, we get some water from the river, but the majority of the water that we get is starting from 400 feet beneath where you're sitting. We get most of our water from aquifers. Mm -hmm. So uh, a pretty decent portion of this uh, Texas Master Naturalist education is the unique hydrology in this area. We have right. two huge aquifers underneath us. A lot of folks in El Paso don't know that, so we like to we like to teach them about these really really key elements to life in the desert. Yeah, people yeah. maybe if they remember from like uh, I don't remember which grade they go into it in like uh, elementary or middle school of you know general like uh, you know U.S. education about you know that there are major aquifers in like parts of the Midwest and like the Ogallala Aquifer will always live rent free in my head along with like concept of you know mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> but beyond those kind of you know broad concepts and the way it affects you know important things like agriculture, major farming, and things like that. We have, again, our own specific ones here, including uh, very specifically kind of out in what the w Take H2O Center is nearby, uh, the Hueco Bolson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the Hueco Bolson is the, the larger of our two aquifers. And because of that big brackish aquifer on the mm -hmm. east side of our mountains, El Paso is actually home to the largest inland desalination plant in the entire world. See, I had known that factor here. I had thought that there may have been an intervening one where, like, uh, somewhere in the Middle East, like the Saudis, had built another bigger one. But at the very least, it has been. So it still is the biggest that exists in land. I mean, next to an ocean, it makes it's a level of sense to someone, I'm sure. But inland, without, and I mean, we, we can't even see an ocean from here. I mean, we often joke that we're, uh, the, we're a beach without the ocean along with it. But you could guess, argue that in this case, the ocean is under us. It is, yeah. There is a very, very large body of salt water right underneath us on the east side of the mountain. And so uh, in talking about the, the 
uh, desalination plant that we have out there. Uh, Tech H2O, the Water Resources Learning Facility, is right next door on that same campus. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of the stuff that the Master Naturalists do um, is in conjunction with Tech H2O. And we do provide a lot of that water education, um, not just to the Master Naturalist class, but once we're all certified, the Master Naturalists as volunteers uh, come out and lead programs at Tech H2O. Mm. So it's a very giving and receiving relationship between us. Absolutely. And I'm sure there's uh, interesting visits that can be done beyond, of course, the facility, which is certainly important there. But, I mean, there's a whole lot of other facets that go into water management. So kind of that, again, interaction between the natural, physical, and then the human environment we inhabit here. Because, among other things, there's things like uh, recharge sites or the uh, the wells that are actually, in some cases, pumping back down into the aquifer in order to uh, the de- deal with the, the brackish inclusion, as it's sometimes put here, because there is fresh water, and that's the part that we very much are interested in when it comes to the aquifers here, but uh, there's it, it's kind of a give and take. It's not just a, all right, pump it out. It's about management of it as well, and so I'm sure that's part of what you all get into as well, right? Yes, definitely. Um, I like to think of the Texas Master Naturalist Program as um, training people not only to be a very well-trained core of volunteers, but we are stewards of this land. Uh, yeah. This Chihuahuan Desert, this is our home, and it is up to us to learn about it and learn how to take care of it and teach others how to take care of it. And um, I, you know, I'm biased. Water's my thing, but sure. water is life. Uh, there is no life without water. So we we absolutely have to learn everything that we can about the hydrology in this region because we need to protect it and take care of it. Um, just you know, like you said about the salt water intrusion that could mm. be happening in the aquifers and. Uh, the the pumpage of the aquifers and the bolsons. It's it's stuff that we all have to keep in the back of our mind. And as stewards, uh, it is our responsibility. And again, the history part of it is important as well. Like, okay, how does it come to be in a desert that does not, I mean, we got a river, sure, the Rio Grande or however grand it may or may not be at this point in time, is significant and important, but how, how did this come to be in this way? And the part that often blows people's minds here, I uh, sometimes reference them to the you know older Leon Metz books that discuss this kind of in brief because uh, it's hard to put dates on this and he was mostly interested in specific dates, but I mean, there have been this, the fact that sticks in my mind is that this area has been covered by oceans, inland seas, that kind of type of water 11 times over the geologic history that we have been able to study so far anyway. And so we're kind of looking at essentially ancient seas still under our feet. And the freshwater part of it is what the Regrand has been able to do since that most recent time that there was that coverage by a sea. And, you know, the Rio Grande is so uh, culturally significant to us here in El Paso. Um, That's one of the programs that that we stress uh, out at Tech H2O is um, the meandering of the river. Mm -hmm. Uh, We would not have a cemented, solidified border if that river could just stay in its place, but it couldn't. (laughs) So we had the Chamisal Treaty, which cemented the riverbed, which fundamentally changed the landscape of El Paso. Mm -hmm. Um, So there, yes, of course, is the natural science component, but there's the history component, too. I mean, yeah, all of these things end up in conjunction, so it's almost, uh, uh, it almost seems like it'd be hard to figure out where to start with some of these subjects because it's all so interconnected, and as you're trying to do this kind of broad level with it, I- I'm sure that, again, kind of as you were saying, Joseph, that 40 hours ends up being not enough to start teaching about all these things because you're kind of, as much as that sounds, I kind of feel like it about this show. I mean, two hours sounds like a long time to talk about a subject as we do every Saturday, but often we end up end up feeling a little bit lacking, like, you know, we didn't get quite far enough into it or we only really scratched the surface. And I'm sure that's the kind of sense that you all end up with kind of for, for the newer students or those that may even be returning and doing other volunteering as they're just basically getting their feet wet. No, no pun intended, Alex. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and, and all that wonderful uh, information that Alex gave, uh, a lot of that's covered in the class. Mm-hmm. So you walk out saying, wow, I had no idea we were on an ocean. And then when you do the geology class, you understand how that water is kept in that bolson. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, they all interconnect. They all interconnect. Uh, the history part, we have a history segment, uh, the archaeology segment, the water hydrology segment. They all fit together. Uh, to create a better picture and that's what these students walk out with is that picture of how all these things are interconnected so very broad and 
basic in its own way, but an important starting point. It may be a better way to put it here when it comes to this. So tell you what, we've got to take that next break right now. Again, joining us here in studio, that was Joseph Arteaga, President, and Alex Fashing, Vice President. Also here, we'll talk more in the next segment with Lois Ballin, the uh, advisor, all for the Texas Master Naturalist Program. So stay tuned. More on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Of course, some of our other great partners in promoting different aspects of El Paso history include Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. Go to talkandrockradio.com to find him and his more recent episodes back in production for 2023, including new things coming out and new remembrances. He does a lot of work on both his experience in terms of the El Paso music scene and particularly the golden age of rock and roll in which he had uh, a lot of famous names coming out of our area and uh, music that you may recognize and some that you may not but will be interested to hear so of course, check them out, talkandrockradio.com. Maybe having him on future editions of the show as well to refresh that. But again, talkandrockradio.com is where you can find his music podcast. But again, joining us here in the studio right now, uh, joined by some from the Texas Master Naturalist Program. Before we end up getting toward the end of this hour, we are, again, scratching the surface in a whole lot of ways. So I uh, specifically want to talk with now uh, Lois uh, uh, Ballin, urban wildlife biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife, but also as an advisor for the Texas Master Naturalist Program. You do a lot of work on, again, and we mentioned that this isn't just flora and fauna, but the flora and fauna and those aspects of it are certainly important. They certainly are. Um, so my specialty is obviously wildlife. Mm -hmm. So I teach the ornithology class, the mammalogy class, and urban ecology. So I have a lot to offer the students because it's the only opportunity they have to get hands on wildlife experience. Um, every year I do dove banding. And the mm -hmm. volunteers learn actually how to handle the birds and how to ban the birds. And then, of course, there's the burrowing owl project. Which I think is that, is this a picture of you yes. holding one there? Yes, it is. Yeah. So the burrowing owl, not too much bigger than your hand itself there. They're, they're kind of small and kind of petite, not quite as maybe grandiose as people may think of like the, you know, traditional quote-unquote owl, but it's what exists in our area. Yes, it's a, one of our most common owls here, and we're very fortunate to have them. They're very charismatic. Yeah, I've, I've heard them be required as funny or yeah, very uh, full of personality here. And so protection of the habitat is certainly important. And so that's at least part of what you get into, right? Absolutely. You cannot have wildlife without habitat. 
So a lot of things we do is habitat restoration, trail maintenance, trail building. Mm -hmm. um, I'm involved in the process of creating more open space, open mm -hmm. natural mm -hmm. space in El Paso, um, and volunteers help with outreach for that. But basically anything that has to do with ecology or wildlife, there are opportunities to help. Absolutely, and showing off uh, some of those things and the ways people can uh, see what it looks like getting involved, including, of course, a lot of trail hikes, other birds in different ways. And so some of the specific aspects that you teach are beyond just kind of what's here in our region, but even specific subsets of that, right? Well, we'll give a general overview of, like, for instance, in mammalogy. Mm -hmm. We'll give a general overview of mammals. Um, but then I focus on the mammals of the Trans-Pecos region. Same with ornithology. In ornithology, you know, they're giving a lot of biology, a lot of ecology, a lot of what's happening and what can we do mm -hmm. with the birds, and focus on the native birds. And on our field trip, then they really learn to identify birds, and it gives them a passion, and then they can lead trips. Absolutely. I mean, just a couple of the topics that I am as a, uh, I would like to think well-read person, but haven't gone through this specific training. I mean, there's a bunch of different even sub-environments in our area because you may think about the general desert, you know, the bird vultures people may see out there in those areas, the hawks, uh, predators. But then we've got, of course, the burrowing hours. Then we've got, like, say, the wetlands areas, you know, the Rio Bosque, um, the, uh, you know, uh, the Keystone site, and then the river on its own here. And there's interesting interplays that happen with this, even with laws, such about the migratory bird acts that happen here and why why yes see those you know ducks and other birds flying overhead at those appropriate times during the year so and that's just off the top of my head there's I'm sure a lot more specifics that can be delved into when it comes to all of these subjects that's correct i mean it's like taking a crash college course <laughs> okay um, some of them are the full three hours like ornithology for mm -hmm. instance because there's just so much to cover and uh, yeah that's exactly true so, I mean, there's a lot more detail that comes out of this here. So, again, if people want to be involved with this, if they want to make sure, because part of the reason we're talking about this is not just as an interesting program that I've wanted to have on the show for a while now, but also the fact is that you all are having the, uh, you know, upcoming class coming up here, right? Yes. Uh, February 3rd, I believe, will be our first class. And uh, uh, we're accepting registrations all up until the very day of the class. So uh, February 2nd. February 2nd. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, if, if someone is interested, uh, the easiest way to do it is to uh, go to our website, and they'll direct you to the person that needs to be contacted to send that information out. Uh, Eva is our uh, treasurer, and she works at the Texas A&M uh, site here in El Paso, mm -hmm. and she'll be able to get that information out to the prospective candidate. And again, that website, txmn.tamu.edu. So, txmn.tamu.edu for the Texas Master Naturalist Program. Of course, we'll search up Texas Master Naturalist Program, and you should be more or less directed the right way, or at least to find the contact information there. But again, you've got registration coming up February 2nd, the clarification there of when the classes start here. So there are steps that need to be taken. It's not a kind of a, this should not be a last minute thing as much as that happens in this region by people who live here. But again, keep that idea in mind there if you're wanting to take a part of it and learn a lot more about what's going on here. So that's going to take us uh, through the end of our first hour here right now. Again, joining us here in studio has been Joseph Arteaga, President, Lois Ballin, uh, the Urban Wildlife Biologist and Advisor for the Texas Master Naturalist Program, and Alex Fassing, Vice President for the program. Thank you all very much for joining us here. We're going to have some of you all sticking around, some new people joining us for the second hour, so stay tuned here for more on the El Paso History Radio Show. And again, thank you all very much for being in the studio with us right now. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And back here in the second hour with more, stay tuned. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. 
Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. 
Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. 
You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, 
Invest in real estate. M1EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, M numeral one, ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so. Be it on air, online, live streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app or joining us over on our various social media pages, uh, similar ones under either Andrew J. Polk or the El Paso History Radio Show, El Paso History, El Paso History Radio, etc. on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch.tv. Of course, we've been continuing our conversation about the Texas Master Naturalist Program, its upcoming classes, as well as the very many topics that are explored as part of it. Definitely delving into that with some more guests on for us this hour of the program, but starting hour two of the show as we usually do with a history moment with documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk, today talking about a popular Mexican faith healer of the past who lived in El Paso for a while. Teresita Urea was a Mexican mystic, folk healer, and revolutionary insurgent who moved to El Paso in the late 1890s. While living in Mexico in 1889, Urea was seriously ill and began to experience religious visions. After she recovered, She believed she had been given healing powers by the Virgin Mary. She soon gained a following when 1,200 people camped nearby to seek healing and observe miracles. Indigenous people began to call her the Saint of Cabora. Teresita drew criticism from Catholic Church officials for giving informal sermons that drew attention to clerical abuses. She was known to be friendly with the sick, especially the poor, working from dawn until sometimes late at night healing people. Teresita was also reported to have a gift of clairvoyance. The Mexican press began to cover her activities in December of 1889 in Mexico City. Orea was venerated as a folk saint among the Yaqui and Mayo people, who are indigenous to the Sonoran Desert near the United States border. She was blamed for several insurrections against the Mexican government and was exiled with her father in May 1892 to Nogales, Arizona. They moved to El Paso after several years of accusations that she was responsible for continued unrest in Mexico. 
Depressed in El Paso described her as an apolitical spiritual healer until popular revolts against the Mexican government erupted along the border in August of 1896. Reportedly, insurgents carried her photograph over their hearts in the belief that it would protect them during the uprising. Teresita Oreo denied any involvement and focused on her healing work while in El Paso. Teresita Oreo moved to California after the government of Mexico attempted to kill her. She continued her work there and helped Mexican laborers unionize. She is remembered in El Paso as a dedicated spiritual healer who worked tirelessly for the poor and sick. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. Also at this point, I'd like to mention some of our other great partners in talking about aspects of El Paso history, including the great Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Gibbon Bainey and many others. You can go there for archive pictures galore and also our promo announcements each week. They have more than 33,000 members at last check. But please remember, the administrators have worked hard in researching photos with our history attached. When using their photos, they ask that credit be given to the site, and a lot of credit is to be given to the administrators and owners there, including Chief Admin and owner and historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB, along with admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, and moderator Ben Vincent. They're always looking for a few more good hands. It's no mean feat to keep a group of that size on task and focused and not just full of spam like too many other Facebook groups I've seen gone to. So they do a lot of important work and, well, keeping it in the public eye as we certainly appreciate and uh, the complimentary efforts going on there. So again, remember in El Paso when is where you can find them on Facebook and if you want to be part of their moderation or administrative staff, drop them a line there as well. Remember in El Paso when the name of the page. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we are of course joined again the second hour right now by Joseph Arteaga, president of the Trans-Pecos chapter of the Texas Master Naturalist Program. But joining us now for hour two, we have uh, Ruby Angalio, the uh, Keystone Heritage Park liaison and advisor for the Texas Master Naturalist program and uh, Paul Heider, PhD ecologist and advisor and instructor for the program as well. Thank you all very much for sticking around and joining us here for the show here today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So getting back into the talk about it, of course, the Texas Master Naturalist Program, the way that, again, the shorthand I put forth, the quickest way to become a professional volunteer in a lot of organizations and causes in our region, talking about the upcoming classes, because you do have the kickoff for this season, for this year, coming up early February. So if people are listening to this right now, this is at all interesting to them, as we've been talking about so far, they need to get on that right now. Again, some of those websites and important information there, including uh, txmn.com. T-A-M-U dot E-D-U, the main website for the Texas Master Naturalist Program. So T-X-M-N dot T-A-M-U dot E-D-U, or actually a phone number as well if people want to give you all a call as well. Be able to contact the organization, 915-771-2354. That's 915-771-2354, because... Again, it's it's a process not even just to go through this and get the certification, but even to, to get going with it, right? Absolutely. So those are important things to know about. But uh, talk more about some of the other specialties that are focused under it here. Again, it's 40 hours may sound like a long time to uh, do the classroom and instructional part of the volunteering and get into it before you get to the volunteering, that is. But uh, there are so much to cram into there that we're even uh, going to have some trouble getting it all in on the program here today. So, uh, Ruby Ann, talking specifically about uh, your kind of specialty, you actually have a pretty colorful assemblage here uh, in front of you today demonstrating some of the, uh, we had talked a little bit about some of the floor and fauna in the first hour, and you have some very specific things that you focus on, particularly when it comes to the Keystone Heritage Park, right? Well, yes. So Keystone Heritage Park is a 58-acre um, wetlands, two acres of garden, and a desert experience. Lots of times people are like, oh, the desert is dead. There's nothing beautiful mm -hmm. about the desert. Mm -hmm. And that's so not true. Even in just our two acres of garden, we have evergreen things. Cactus are evergreen. So toll are evergreen. Mm -hmm. There are certain trees that are evergreen. So I talk a lot about the garden. The wetlands, people are shocked to know that there is a natural spring in El Paso right. that used to contribute to the Rio Grande. There are lots of springs all over El Paso and kind of Tio and Anthony, but we're lucky enough that Keystone is available to the public and it gives you an idea of what the Rio Grande, grand, it's the word, it was a grand river. Mm -hmm. And if we use our imaginations and see the spring, it lets us know what the Rio Grande really once was like. And so, yeah, we talk about that. I do lots of tours in the garden. We have lots of wildlife, like I have here, a bobcat. Or part of it, anyway. Part of it. <laughs> a coyote. 
and a raccoon and just three days ago oh my gosh um i was going to close the garden and there were th a little family of raccoon there in the garden oh my bobcat so yeah there's definitely lots of wildlife to see and experience absolutely here and then uh paul you as an ecologist you are certainly versed in and familiar with some of these subjects but you, you also focus on some other specific aspects of these whole sets of topics right Right. Yeah, the stuff I teach, I mean, you know, numerous classes, all the way from general ecology to desert ecology, uh, entomology, herpetology, citizen science, soils, you know, the list goes on. And all of these are critical parts of the program because, again, it kind of I like the way it was put at the end of the last segment of a crash uh, college course and all of these things is kind of what the overview of this is. So it's a lot to kind of like broach subjects, like get people, you know, very introduced to them. But uh, this certainly isn't too exhausting. It could have been what hopefully be for most people involved with it, the launching of a further lifetime of learning because I mean even just even just these subjects if we just went through the ologies or the studies of the sciences that we've put forth so far within the first hour what we've mentioned here so far that's several lifetimes worth of degrees to fully go into the depth of them oh absolutely yeah it, we we kind of distill the important stuff and try and make it accessible and then instill curiosity in our students to that continue and again, that's a critical part of it because, again, beyond even just the, the classroom part of it, the, of course, volunteering that comes along with it, I mean, a lot of the stuff I've learned about any of these subjects that we have been discussing here has come from times when I've either been out at, you know, a Keystone Heritage Park or out in, you know, say the Franklin Mountains or other of the, you know, state parks or other aspects or the natural environments, you know, uh, uh, Rio Bosque, you know, those kind of things come to mind here about how to learn about this because there's a certain amount that you can certainly learn by you know studying it reading about it is sitting in the classroom but there's a whole lot more that really kind of needs to be directly experienced it to truly kind of get the idea of it particularly when it comes to i mean sure wildlife again you have some of the what you were referencing there uh ruby ann uh of the you know who you, your friends you have with you you have both some stuffed animals and then the uh skins of a few to give the demonstration of it here but it's one thing to kind of see them in this almost clinical sense, I'll call it here, and another day able to go out and see them actually physically present if you're lucky enough to in some of these cases. Yeah, absolutely. You know, from my perspective, you know, one hour in the field, a good one hour in the field is worth five hours in the classroom. Hmm. So, you know, get out and experience this stuff firsthand. It makes a huge difference. Absolutely here. So uh, talk a little bit about, you got some of these, again, assembled birds or stuffed birds is what you've got in front of you here, Ruby. And then you, I think a point that you were making is that all of these can actually be seen, particularly at different points during the year, out at the, the Keystone uh, Heritage Park and the wetlands there, right? Exactly. So here I have a blackbird. It's a red winged blackbird. They, oh, there's, okay, wow. So they're really, really cute. What I love about these birds do you want me to talk about like all the birds or let's just mention the ones you got in front of <laughs> you here okay. it's just they're so cute and um i when i do tours in the garden and i invite people children you can call in and make a tour you know just for two people many people and so depending on what's there sometimes we'll see these birds um ducks are here year round of course this is a mallard there are mexican mallards that were being um studied there at the garden there in the wetlands and back to the blackbird with the red winged blackbird why i love this particular bird so much they flock and they fly in groups like if you come around sunset when they're in the garden when they're here in el paso at the time they flock in groups and it's just like magical watching them in the air and what they're doing is they're warming up it's called murmuration mm -hmm. and and then they you know sleep close together and so part of being a naturalist is observing the world um observing nature and thinking about it and seeing like what do these animals do that we do how can we make our lives better and make their lives better um I just, I love spending time in the garden, in the wetlands, outdoors. This program is very important to me. When I originally started, so I'm going to go off here just so you mm -hmm. know. When I originally started the Master Naturalist program, it's because Keystone Heritage Park relies on volunteers. We mm -hmm. are a mostly volunteer organization. And there was a Master Naturalist who spent 500 hours. I mean, every day she was there removing tumbleweeds and then mm -hmm. she moved 
back to Germany and I was like, oh my God, I need more volunteers. How am I going to find these volunteers? So I originally joined the organization to make friends to invite more volunteers. The more I have learned the field trips that we went on, the more in love I have become with El Paso. El Paso is an amazing place. Keystone is an amazing place. And I feel that this organization has so much to give us as far as like personally, like, and then we turn around and give back to the community, but it is personally enriching. Yeah. I just can't talk enough about the Texas master naturalist program and Keystone Heritage Park, of course. Of course here. But I mean, the, I guess the idea of inspiring not even just uh, the desire for more knowledge, but also passion along with it, even if you may have already found some of that yourself with all the rest of these subjects, is kind of a, a, a critical component of this here because this is not just a, hey, here's some information, maybe you'll use it sometime. This is a, here's here's the important things you need to know about this area and then really how to apply it. I mean, that's at least a part of the way I think it comes around, doesn't it, Joseph? Oh, yeah. And, and the beauty of the program, once again, is, is the relationships that you make with like-minded people. Uh, there's groups of people that just spend time together they go on vacations now together but also uh the uh associations we have various organizations uh with uh like uh the bats uh okay. bci uh, which is a program that uh promotes bat conservation they're out of austin and we have an affiliation with them so we do bat walks so uh, we have a group of people that are just very enthusiastic about bats mm -hmm. uh, so they lead bat walks uh we work with the zoo very closely and we have a zoo ambassadorship where we have uh our a lot of our texas master naturals who go out there and help people with the uh tours and talking about the various animals there mm. of course our booths are outreach uh where you'll see us at various organ uh organizations and uh activities you'll see a booth where we're out there doing the education and that's one of the things that Ruby Ann is also involved in. Uh, she works very closely with our junior master naturalists. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And that's a program where we bring the young ones in and we try and teach them uh, about our natural environment. Uh, we work very closely with the Ascarity Fishing Club. So just becoming a master naturalist, like you said earlier, doesn't mean that you're going to be out there doing labor, working trails, sure. doing stuff. We have a lot of people that like to just... Uh, promote our organization through Facebook. Uh, we have people that uh, like going on the hikes. We have people that like, like Ruby Ann was saying, that like enjoy, enjoy volunteering at the Keystone Heritage Park, at the Rio Bosque, uh, Second Chance Wildlife Refuge, uh, and of course our Texas parks. So we're everywhere. Absolutely. I mean, everything that's around us is the focus of what we are talking about here and the education that comes along with it. So got to take that next break right now. Again, joining us here in studio, that's Joseph Arteaga, the president of the Trans-Pecos chapter of the Texas Master Naturalist Program. Also speaking there, Ruby Ann Gallio, uh, Keystone Heritage Park liaison and advisor for the Texas Master Naturalist Program, and Paul Hyder, Ph.D. ecologist and advisor and instructor with the program, talking more about with all of these aspects with them after this next break. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690. KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. 
M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on... Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. I want to tell you a little bit about what we got coming up for you next week on the show. As kind of hinted at, we'll be delving into a more specific way into a related subject here, but and it's all also how you can visit the site there of the Franklin Mountains State Park. Of course, there well, they have a lot of demand out there right now. Some programming they have been coming up, and of course, the way the park has come about and the way you can see the parts of the natural history that are present out there by going and visiting, including their new-ish visitor center and a whole lot of other features out there. So coming on next week on the show, talking more with park rangers there. So stay tuned for that. On on the program here. Of course, I want to remind you about uh, another one of our great sponsors to the program, including Mission Del Rey Southwest. You can go there with out-of-town visitors for souvenir, jewelry, gifts, and decor items. A great selection. Pretty much some standards out there, but they always have some new stuff coming in about uh, literal or figurative flavors of the Southwest, including f- literal food items, so flavor there for you. But also, of course, you know, they've got uh, decor, they have patio furniture, and a whole lot more. They have some, let's call it famous seats out there that you can go and take pictures with, but find them at their 12,000 square foot showroom on Lee Trevino, or visit them online at missiondelray.com. That's missiondelray.com. They do ship around the world. Mention the El Paso History Radio Show for a discount. Give them a call if you want to find their location. you got their Lee Trevino and Pelicano, 915-440-2140. That's 915-440-2140. But back here in studio right now, again, joined by representatives, both of the administration and advisors and instructors for the Texas Master Naturalist Program. From my left to right, Joseph Arteaga, the president, and then Ruby Angalio, Keystone Heritage Park Liaison, as well as uh, Paul Heider, Ph.D., ecologist and advisor and instructor for the program. Here. So, Ruby, and we were talking a little bit before in the previous segment about some of the ways that this information is portrayed and uh, some of the instruction, particularly for a uh, Keystone Heritage Park. And so some of the visual aids that you have along with you here are not even just kind of uh, fun things to have, but also a part of the education here. So we got a few more birds that are present out there at uh, Keystone Heritage Park that you like to mention, right? Exactly. So Keystone is home. Keystone Heritage Park is home to about 230 different birds, some migrating some year round. And these are examples of some of the birds that are there. Like this is a northern flicker. This is a red-tailed hawk. No. This is a kestrel. I'm sorry. This is a kestrel. Mm -hmm. This is an avocet. Avocet that some people might confuse with the sandpiper with its kind of longish beak, but uh, they're different. Right. They are different. And speaking of its beak, so these are some of the things that we use for education. And like a bird's beak and its coloring, everything has a reason. I'm not going to tell you that reason right now because I want to invite everyone to come <laughs> to the garden. About once a month, we set up the what we call trunks. We set up the table with all these stuff from our trunks that we set up to... Um, educate the public and show the children because if you love nature like quails if you love it you'll want to protect it and then of course the mallard duck again and the red winged blackbird so you mentioned the trunks there also specifically that's not even just a uh, feature for of course keystone heritage park but of the program overall because putting these together is both useful for the instruction that comes along with the texas master naturalist program but then of the further volunteering and outreach efforts as well because I mean, sure, these are, you got both pelts there and then cute stuffed Mm -hmm. birds in this case, but uh, they're useful because they do demonstrate part of what can be seen here because you have to, it's one thing to be able to catch it in the wild, which is great, but not always available, and then these are. So, again, furthering those outreach efforts uh, that come along with this, right? Correct, correct. Oh, we also in our trunks have um, 
footprints, all sorts of educational stuff so that people can see and get to know what they should look for or can look for when they're out and hiking and out in the wild. Absolutely. So a little bit more on some of the things that are learned about during the duration of the Texas Master Naturalist Program and what comes after it there. That again, uh, Ruby Ann Gallio. We're going to be talking with her more and as well as our other guests here in studio with us right now. Got to take that next break, short segment here. So coming out of this break, more focus on the Texas Master Naturalist Program and the education and outreach that comes along with it. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Stay tuned. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-588. 1850 today. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Don't forget to check out some of our other great partners and while we're running this show and other aspects of El Paso history. Uh, this week, only in El Paso Inc., you'll find unique and original reporting there going in depth on a lot of the important things affecting us currently in the area, but you can also find our promo announcements there. So we appreciate the partnership we have with them, El Paso's Business Journal, El Paso. Paso Inc. is available for home or business delivery to receive El Paso Inc. Order it online or get your digital subscription at ElPasoInc.com. One more of our sponsors, of course, to mention here, call 915-588-1850. That's 915-588-1850. For Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker, Heritage Real Estate, Patrick is an excellent realtor. He and his team have done a lot of heavy lifting for me and my family when it comes to including the house we're currently in right now. So you can go to him for El Paso Sales. For El Paso homes for sale or rent, call again, 915-588-1850. That's 915-588-1850. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we do have from my left to right, Joseph Arteaga, president of the Trans-Pecos chapter of the Texas Master Naturalist Program, and then also Ruby Ann Gallio, the uh, Keystone Heritage Park liaison and instructor for Texas Master Naturalist, and Paul Hyder, Ph.D. and ecologist and advisor and instructor for the Texas Master Naturalist Program here locally. So we're going through a lot of different aspects of what is instructed, what are the features here, and so we've shown some of the uh, visual aids, but uh, Paul, as you were mentioning a little bit earlier, some of the ability to go out and see things in there, that's a at least a, a strong focus that you have of actually physically getting into the areas and, and giving people a chance to not even just learn about it, but experience it as much as possible personally, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, yes, yeah, that personal experience that really makes it real for people. So in addition to the Master Naturalist hikes we do, usually associated with the Desert Ecology Lecture, mm. I also do nighttime hikes sponsored by Celebration of Our Mountains. Absolutely. So we get mm. on their website, and you know they're a great organization for getting out in the field. Mm -hmm. It makes a huge difference. So we have classroom instruction, which talks about basic concepts, principles, and so on. 
and then we try and get out in the field and apply those things that we've learned in classroom. Absolutely, because I mean, you got to know what you're doing and, and what you're experiencing to be able to have like the the true appreciation of it. So the classroom is certainly important, but then getting the ability to be out there in the environment in different ways, and particularly night hikes, is something that you you focus on, right? Yeah, um, as a desert ecologist, uh, you know the famous saying, which I'm sort of paraphrasing. You know, the only the only people out in the desert during the day are mad dogs, Englishmen, and biologists. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. everything else with any sense comes out at night during the summer. So we set up our field trips in, you know, after dark in the summer, and that's when the desert comes alive, and it's just a magical place to be. I mean, it's in, been said in other ways, uh, like for my Cub Scout uh, ecologist or, you know, environmental concerns here about, like, uh, blocking off, like, a one square foot or, like, a one square yard area of, like, you know, just general terrain, usually grass, and just seeing what happens in that area within that. So not quite the same concept can be worked out here. I mean, it could be in a lot of similar ways, but you might need to look a little bit more broadly to really capture what is going on in the desert because it can be, well, it's so very different than other places and other places even around the country or even our region. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things I really hope comes across in these lectures is, you know, if you look at the, the desert around El Paso, particularly in the east, out Fort Bliss, oh, yeah. that area, that is not mm. good habitat. That is hammered stuff. Uh, but El Pasoans grow up seeing that, thinking that's healthy desert, and it's not. So we try and give them, you know, okay, here's what desert should look like. Here's the some of the history, the environmental history of our region and so on. So they kind of can appreciate that, you know, what you're seeing on a daily basis isn't really what good desert is. Yeah, so I mean, the the area you kind of see when you, like, fly into El Paso yeah, International yeah. there, the stuff that you see before you start hitting, like, really into Fort Bliss, that's, I mean, you got the, you know, the big mounds, yeah. the, the kind of, a, it's been referred to by some people as, like, a moonscape, because it seems like there's not a lot going on out there, but that's kind of a very one-dimensional view of, of what terrain or, or landscape is, of we kind of have this tendency to think about, is it productive, is it good, you know, is a, it, does it look nice? And that's not the standard that, terrain ecology you know flora and fauna have its have put forth on its own there it's about what can it sustain and is it kind of doing that so if you look at it through that kind of lens that's more what you get into it sounds like exactly like the, the mounds you talk about we refer to those as mesquite coppice dunes mm -hmm. and it's the way mesquite grows that forms those dunes interacting with wind so you know ecology is basically a, a st studying the the transfer of energy and nutrients through systems and mm -hmm. the interactions of organisms with each other in the non-living environment so it's a ton of stuff that we try and pack into you know one or two lectures in a field evening uh, but even at that you can still get a lot of the basic idea across you know just relationships like for example um you know lawns okay the average american lawn ecologically mm -hmm. is dead you know there's so many better ways we could be using our landscape uh native plants you know, you bring mm -hmm. in exotic plants, which are pretty, but your native insects don't have a clue what to do with them. Right. And insects are the foundation, basically. You know, if the insects disappear, game over. So we try and get a lot of these ideas across and get people understanding, okay, what things can I do in my own world, my own yard, to support the ecology of our region? Again, the the concepts that we have that come forth with about what plants should do or, or what we think that they should do and then how that real are real, in reality uh, one way it's been put to me is that i mean anyone who's had a garden is probably deal with garden pests and uh, that may be an annoyance and i think okay how can i eliminate this but another way it's been put to me to take it in a different perspective is if nothing is eating your garden it's no longer a part of the environment exactly in fact just another little tidbit for you caterpillars which gardeners tend to hate mm -hmm. are the single most effective transfer of energy from photosynthesis into the animal world yeah, got to get those. I mean, you think about the you know the whole food chains and the right. considerations of it here. I mean, there everything is eaten by something at some point in time, and if you're kind of changing or cutting off part of that, I mean, you want to go back to then lawns. The idea of it, I mean, the way that there are the impetuses to you know spray, treat, keep them looking pristine and perfect is. Another way it's been put to me is that anytime you see an area that only has one type of low kind of plant life, uh, at least in nature, that's been usually a result of a disaster of right. some kind. And that's why you start seeing, I mean, we, we call them weeds, but they're actually a critical part of the process and cycle of, I mean, uh, say, take the medians we see around town. Anytime you would see something that is covered only in rock 
and or maybe large plants or planting of some kind is only after like a landslide has happened and then those uh, another way to put the weeds would be as pioneer species trying to come back and reclaim the natural territory and have life begin there again so it's all about the perspective and that so that's the sounds a lot of like what you go into absolutely absolutely yeah you put it well that shifting of perspectives so going out there and seeing that, particularly on then those night hikes, I mean, there's a lot to be looked at. You actually have a, a visual aid, uh, so to speak, there in front of you uh, with a, uh, a skull of, well, there's a few things that can be learned from even just analyzing yeah, it, right? So Bob Bobcat skull here. Okay, so, you know, we can talk about ecology. So, you know, deserts are, they tend to be low energy systems. So organisms that live in deserts have to be really good at getting energy, their food. Mm-hmm. Well, so this bobcat here, okay, so what makes this a cat? Well, a lot of different things we can talk about. But from one of my perspectives, what's really interesting is the dentition. You know, why do cat teeth look like they do? Mm-hmm. So we've got incisors, we've got canines, we've got carnassials here. If you look at that, the dentition of a cat, you realize all these back teeth are basically just fancy scissors. Mm-hmm. So they're not chewing much like we do. You know, like herbivores or omnivores do a lot of chewing of plant material. Mm-hmm. If all you eat is other animals, you basically need something to pierce, kill, and cut like scissors. And most predators tend to get most of their energy and water from their prey in deserts. Right. The so, water part of it is pretty crucial yeah. as all well because, I mean, given, I mean, sure, we've got some natural areas that have uh, more of a feature of that, like Waco Tanks comes to mind here, where yeah. there is water available more or less in certain ways year round. And you start getting to the interesting circumstances of, like, you know, the uh, desert pool shrimp and those yeah. kind of things that are reliant on that in its own ways. But yeah, the fact of the matter is, I mean, there are some species around the world, maybe not totally locally, that may never actually drink water. They get it solely from what they are ingesting food wise. Right. Right. And, you know, so when you look at the biota of deserts, you tend to not find lots of large things. Mm. Because the, the, the key to survival in deserts, like hot deserts like ours, is get underground. Mm. If, you know, we, we have actual data showing that if on the hottest desert days, if you're 20 inches underground, the highest temperature you'll experience is like maybe 85. Mm. And uh, the coldest temperature might be in the high 30s, low 40s. And being underground, your ambient humidity is almost always 100%. So by getting underground, you essentially avoid desert conditions. Well, if you're something like a large, warm fuzzy, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah, that is a good question. And why there are some interesting like microclimates around here, like I uh, love going out to like Carlsbad Caverns. Absolutely. And the reason it has and the reason people would want to go in there or animals, life forms, any kind, is because of the very different environments that you have from the surrounding terrain. Exactly. So it makes a lot of sense there. Again, uh, that is uh, Paul Heider, a Ph.D. ecologist and advisor and instructor for the Texas Master Naturalist Program. Of course, joining us here in studio as well, Joseph Ardiaga, president of the program, and Ruby Angelio, uh, Keystone Parish Park Liaison. Going to talk more with them about and kind of wrap up some of these concepts we have discussed here at length here, but got to take that next break right now. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140. For souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com. 
M numeral one EP.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long term appreciation, call 915 592 4549. 915 592 4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915 588 1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history. At YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Getting joined back here in studio now by our representatives in both the instruction and administration of the Texas Master Naturalist Program. Again, from my left to right, Joseph Arteaga, the president for the Trans Pecos chapter of the same, Ruby Ann Gaglio, uh, Keystone Heritage Park liaison with Texas Master Naturalist, and uh, Paul Hyder, ecologist, advisor, and instructor for the program as well. So, uh, Paul, I just kind of want to put a pin in it we we're mentioning it uh, during the break right now that we've been going to just scratch the surface of a bunch of things and you put it kind of in a succinct way about how you could discuss these topics and why people should go and see the program therefore because of it right oh absolutely because you know it's, it's like you're saying okay so you know geology de- determines soil soil determines vegetation vegetation determines ecosystem and so on any one of those we could talk for a week on i mean it, those those become you know semester-long college courses so by taking this class, like, as you said earlier, you just kind of skim the surface of this really fascinating stuff that explains all these relationships that make reality what we perceive and we deal with on a daily basis. I guess the way I'm kind of thinking of it, that this show is to the class what the class is to a college education, and a college education is therefore to a lifetime of learning here. We're all small parts pulling toward a much larger whole that each one only kind of hints further at here. As uh, Maybe I'm giving, aggrandizing this program too much, but I hope we're giving a decent overview of all the parts of this here. And so then, uh, Ruby Ann, you also had uh, more about what is coming up about beyond even the class, how well what ways this is moving forward as well, because you have actually a Texas Master Naturalist who's going to be out giving some presentations in the community community in the coming weeks, right? Yes, at Keystone Heritage Park, we do monthly presentations called Talk Tuesday, but during winter, they're on Sundays. Sunday the 22nd at 3 o'clock, Texas Master Naturalist Ama Clages will be doing a presentation on groundwater and how it goes from the ground into your home, how it gets there, and we will be building edible aquifers. So I invite everyone to check out our Facebook and Instagram pages so you get more information and come to the program. Absolutely there. So again, uh, what's the best place for them to find specifically the Keystone Heritage Park? Keystone Heritage Park Facebook page. Absolutely there. So coming back to you then, Joseph, we have covered a lot of territory, literally and figuratively, in the discussions we've had here today about the Texas Master Naturalist Program. So for anyone that, again, is maybe interested in in any part or whole of these subjects of what we've discussed here, and again, therefore, maybe being involved in the program, what's the best way for them to do so? The best way is just uh, they can go on the web, and uh, you've given the web page several times, mm-hmm. or contact us through phone. And then what we'll do, once again, is send you out an application. Uh, then we'll do the background check. Everything clears. Then we'll uh, invite you to come participate in this class. It's fascinating. Uh, just listening to Dr. Heider for the few moments he's been here. Uh, he, he, we go, uh, he teaches several classes, which are all just as fascinating. You walk out of the class like, my goodness, I didn't know that. And it's uh, like I said, tell everybody at the beginning of the class, this class is going to change your life. You will never drive Trans Mountain and Mm -hmm. look at it the same. You will never walk out in the desert and look at it the same. You will never come outside and say, oh, look at the clouds. Because we have a weather class, Mm -hmm. which teaches you about weather and our local weather. And so you'll walk out and say, oh, yeah, it's windy. Oh, here comes a cold front. You know, so it's it's fascinating, all the things you learn. And then, like we've said earlier, if you you really enjoy a particular subject, uh, geology, water, then you dive into it further, and we have the resources to help you do that. 
Absolutely. So this is an introduction in a whole lot of ways, again, as we have barely, barely begun to introduce a whole lot of these subjects and topics here. So again, the process is they do have to apply. There is some requirements they have to go through, background check, uh, among other things, because the ways that people then go on to use the certification can be involving a lot of different people, you know, kids. So making sure that people are of you know, doing this for the right reasons is certainly important there. But then also, of course, uh, they have to then do the classroom experience, 40 hours, volunteering 40 hours as well. And that's just to receive the certification. And then on from there, there's a whole lot more that goes into it and they can continue doing. Absolutely. It's a wonderful program. Absolutely. So again, some of those details, the website for the Texas Master Naturalist Program is TXMN as in Texas Master Naturalist, txmn.tamu.edu. Dot edu. So again, txmn.tamu.edu. And again, that number to call for the local program, the Trans-Pecos chapter, 915-771-2354. That's 915-771-2354. Any particular examples, I guess, or, or examples that you like to give of people who have gone through this program or experiences people have had once they've gotten the certification and what they've been able to go on to do? Oh, my goodness. Well, Ruby Ann just mentioned one. Mm -hmm. But we have a lot of our master naturalists work in the zoo. We have, uh, and then every once, a, once or twice a year, we try to go on a, a big field trip. Uh, last year, we went to Carlsbad Caverns, mm -hmm. and we had one of the rangers go down and lead our hike and uh, discuss what was out there. Uh, of course, the parks, and uh, just going out in the schools, talking to kids about it. And, of course, our Junior Master Naturals program, right. our, our Texas Master Naturals actually teach that program. So some of our uh, Master Naturals are very enthusiastic about botany. So they'll teach the botany class for the Texas the juniors. And it's wonderful to see their little eyes open up and like, wow, I didn't realize that was there. Talk about that for a second, if you can, because we've, of course, been focused on the classes that are coming up starting February 2nd for the Texas Master Naturalist Program. But later on in the year, there will be the Junior Master Naturalist Programs, right? Yes, and the Junior Master Naturalist is kind of like a scaled-down adult class. So we try to keep it interesting for them, a lot of field trips, a lot of going out and seeing and touching. But we try to give them an overall impression of our environment so that they can take care of it. So what age range is that focused on? Uh, this year we're looking at probably between the uh, fifth graders and seventh graders. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, the, the high school students, we have had several high school students actually participate in the adult program. Ah, okay. So good information there for as well. So look at that one a little bit later in the year. But again, the Texas Master Naturalist Program kickoff for the classes for this year coming early February. So go ahead and give them a call now. Again, that number one more time, 915-771-2354, 915-771-2354. Or again, the website, txmn.tamu.edu. Again, txmn dot t a m u dot e d u. So again, joining us here in studio right now have been Joseph Artiaga, president of the Trans Pecos chapter of the Texas Master Naturalist Program, Ruby Ann Gaglio, uh, the Keystone Heritage Park liaison and instructor, and uh, Paul Hader, PhD ecologist and advisor and instructor for the program. Thank you all very much for joining us here to talk about in brief all these subjects, the parts of it in the program here today. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all very much for joining us here for the El Paso Easter Radio Show. I've been your host, Andrew J. Pohl. We'll see you all next week on the program. Have a great one, y'all.